Hello everyone, and welcome back to Conspiracy Seed. Sorry, I've been gone. I don't know if you can tell, I'm in a new place. I got super lucky, and I bought a house. So, now this is my office. Yeah, I just got really lucky, I was able to buy a house. So, that's why I haven't been making videos. I've been uh, dealing with this. But, we're finally back. So let's get into part two of tier three of the disturbing video games iceberg. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. Let's just get into it. Nothing like being subscribed to Conspiracy on YouTube. Nothing like it. Harvester is a 1996 point and click adventure game which is known for its violent content and cult following. In the game, Steve Mason wakes up in a small American farming town of Harvest in the year of 1953, with no memories of his past or who he is. While exploring the house, he discovers that he doesn't recognize his mom or younger brother, both of whom are acting strange. His mom obsessively bakes dozens of cookies, and his brother constantly watches an ultra-violent cowboy show which appears to be the only show on TV. He leaves and explores the town, only to discover that it's populated by hostile, strange individuals who he says are like parodies of real people. Everyone in town thinks he's faking his amnesia, with everyone responding to his questions with, You were always a kidder, Steve. Everyone also suggests that he joins the Lodge, a large building located in the center of town that serves as the headquarters of the Order of the Harvest Moon, which appears to be the center of life in Harvest. He learns through the town that he's engaged to be married in two weeks. With this info, he decides to go meet the person who is his supposed fiance, a girl named Stephanie Potsdam, the daughter of Mr. Potsdam, an unemployed man who hopes to get a job with Steve's dad working in the local meat packing plant, and a man who openly expresses his own lust for his daughter. Meeting Stephanie, Steve finds out that she, too, has amnesia and woke up the same morning as him with no idea of how she got there. The two form an alliance to figure out their past and to escape the town. Steve visits the sergeant at arms at the lodge, who tells him that all of his questions will be answered inside the building and gives him a series of tasks that are on the lodge's initiation. Over the course of the next week, Steve is given a new task each day beginning with small acts of vandalism, but quickly escalating to theft and arson, with each new task having unforeseen, tragic circumstances that usually result in someone's accidental death, murder, or self-death. Meanwhile, driven by the common interest in amnesia, Steve and Stephanie actually begin to fall in love. On the last day of his initiation, Steve discovers a mutilated skull and spinal cord in Stephanie's bed, which the sergeant at arms tells him is the invitation to the lodge. Heading inside, Steve discovers that the lodge is composed of a series of rooms called temples, which serve as shocking parodies of real locations, including a living room with a dead family and a kitchen where a chef prepares human meat. The inhabitants challenge him to a series of puzzles, each meant to teach a lesson that is important to understanding the workings of the lodge. Each lesson is teaching that traditional morality is wrong and teaches the uselessness of charity, how the elderly are actually a burden on society, and how lust and vanity are good. When Steve reaches the highest levels of the lodge, the sergeant at arms shows Stephanie to him and explains that Harvest is an elaborate virtual reality simulator being operated by a group of scientists in the 1990s to determine if it's possible to turn an average person into a serial killer. Steve and Stephanie are the only two real people in the simulation, and everything Steve has experienced has been to warp his reality and break his inhibitions to prepare him for life as a serial killer. The sergeant then offers him two options. He can either murder Stephanie, committing his first real crime and accept a future as a murderer, or refuse, in which case the scientist will render both Steve and Stephanie brain dead in the laboratory. He's also told that should he choose the second option, he and Stephanie will live an entire lifetime of happiness in the Harvest Simulator in the seconds before their death. Now, in this moment, the player actually gets to make their decision. If you decide to kill Stephanie, Steve beats Stephanie to death and removes her skull and spinal cord. After the murder is complete, Steve wakes up within the simulation. Hitchhiking home, he brutally murders the driver who picked him up. He returns home and laughs as the camera pans into his throat and stomach, revealing dissolving body parts of the driver he killed, showing that he is not only a murderer, but a cannibal. If the player chooses to spare Stephanie, the sergeant will perform an impromptu wedding at the chapel before letting the couple go. Steve and Stephanie buy a home, 
have a child, and grow old together before dying peacefully and being buried in the Harvest Cemetery. In real life, the scientists express disappointment at the results of the experiment as they look at the pair's dead bodies. It's on Steam for $5.99 with very positive reviews, with 91% of the reviews being positive, so if you're interested, it is available on Steam. Kodelka is a role-playing video game that was developed by Sankoth for the PlayStation. The game takes place at the haunted Nemton Monastery in Wales. The plot follows protagonist Kodelka, Edward, and Bishop James as they uncover Nemton's secrets and confront monsters created from its dark past. The game is an RPG, or role-playing game. The gameplay is divided between event scenes in which story sequences play, exploration that incorporates puzzle solving, and a battle screen where players fight monsters. Exploration has been compared to Resident Evil games as they have a similar style. The use of a 3D model to explore environments that are pre-rendered backgrounds shown through a fixed camera not only helps compare this game to Resident Evil, but it heightens the tense environment as the game dictates what you can and can't see. Unlike Resident Evil, however, the game has similar combat to an RPG, which can be expected. You used a turn-based system where the player characters are positioned on a grid and you can move to a new square and perform an attack with each turn. I can't find this game on Steam or anywhere outside of like eBay or other second-hand websites, but it has a 93% on Google reviews, so it seems to be pretty well received. Lisa the First is a 2D 8-bit RPG made in RPG Maker 2003 and released in October 2012. It's the first game in the Lisa trilogy and is followed by a much more popular game, Lisa the Painful. You control the main character Lisa Armstrong as she descends into madness. This descent into madness was brought on by the physical and sexual abuse that her father, Marty Armstrong, has inflicted on her. The goal of the game is to get VHS tapes that act as Lisa's memories while exploring the game's various areas. The game itself looks very similar to Earthbound, and if it plays like Earthbound, then I know it's a banger of a game because Earthbound is fun. The game is free to play on Steam and has 87% of users giving it a positive rating. I personally am a huge fan of this like art style when it comes to games, um, so I'll be checking it out. And actually, crazily enough, looking at Steam, it looks like it was released on Steam on March 20th of this year, 2024, so about two months ago. Obscure follows five students from Leafmore High School as they investigate strange happenings, much like Scooby and the gang. Players are able to control the characters one at a time, while the others are controlled by a computer, or a second player even. The five characters are Josh, Stan, Kenny, Shannon, and Ashley. Upon learning about their friend Kenny's disappearance, the others go out to find him. Their search leads them to being locked within Leafmore High overnight. While searching the campus, they're attacked by light-sensitive monsters that can be weakened with flashlights and killed in direct sunlight. The game then shows us that Kenny, also in Leafmore, encounters another student named Dan. They attempt to escape together, but Dan is killed by one of the monsters. The students eventually discover a conspiracy surrounding the principal, Principal Friedman. He has been kidnapping students and infecting them with spores derived from a rare African plant, under the belief that it will allow them to live forever. They then also learn that the principal and his accomplice Elizabeth are over 100 years old despite appearing to be in their 60s after they had successfully ran this experiment on each other. Along the way, the students become exposed to the spores, and the principal is killed by a teacher, Professor Walden, who wants to cure himself of this infection. Upon seeing this, the principal's brother becomes enraged and kills Professor Walden. The brother then mutates into a large monster, only to be defeated by the students. The group return to the gym and inject themselves with the cure. The brother then returns to attack them a second time, and they fight him off a second time, leaving him to die in the sunlight. Obscure is available for $7 on Steam, with overwhelmingly positive reviews, 95% out of 2,133 people have positively rated the game. It might be one worth checking out. Pathologic is a game released in Russia by Buka Entertainment in 2005 and G2 Games and GMX Games in English in 2006. The player can select between three playable characters, The Bachelor, Haruspex, or The Devotress, later retranslated to The Changeling. Only the first two are available to play at the beginning of the game, and The Changeling has to be unlocked by beating the game. 
Regardless of your choice of character, however, each of the three try to uncover the source of a strange lethal sickness known as the Sand Plague that has fallen over the small remote town. The storyline is also the same no matter what character you pick. Minor plot details will change depending on the character and the ability to uncover some secrets depending on the character being played. You can also interact with the two unchosen characters in-game, which I think is pretty cool. Each playable character, while the plot doesn't change, has a designated ending but any character can get any ending if the player completes an optional task. I'm not going to tell you the endings because without like the whole storyline, they didn't make a lot of sense. If you'd like, you can buy it. It's $13 on Steam with an 88% positive rating from 3,045 players. So if you want to know the endings, you can check it out. But again, when I was reading through it, you know, I, I read this whole synopsis and I got confused. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just dumb, but... Um, I thought it was confusing. Owlbleed is a very interesting game to say the least. The reviews are all over the place. I found a Reddit thread talking about it and people talked about how it was super gory off the bat and they remember being creeped out by it back in the day when it first came out in 2001 on the Dreamcast. I also can't find the game available anywhere online other than second hand and it was like $600. So if the game sounds interesting, I unfortunately have no info on how to get it. Anyway, the game is a survival horror game where the player explores six stages. Each of the stages is an amusement park attraction themed after a different fictional horror film and your job is to complete objectives unique to each one. You start off controlling Erico Christie, but as you progress, you rescue and recruit more playable characters. Erico is a high school student and a horror fan. As a child, her family ran a horror caravan a traveling horror themed amusement attraction. Her father tested horror elements on her, traumatizing her as a result. When she was six years old, her mother divorced her father and took Erico, not allowing her to see him, and they became estranged. In the present day, Erico's friends Kevin, Randy, and Michael invite her to Owlbleed, a new horror amusement park. The creator of the park, horror producer Michael Reynolds, offers a $100 million reward to anyone who can successfully reach the end of the park. This is kind of sounding like McCamey Manor, if any of you know what that is, maybe I'll make a video on that one day. Erico says that she doesn't want to go, assuming it's a cheap publicity stunt, and that her friends can go to the park without her. Leaving her ticket behind, they left. It's been a couple days now, and Erico hasn't heard from her friends since the day. She goes to the park to investigate. In the park, Erico explores haunted house attractions themed after horror films, having the opportunity to save each of her friends along the way. If she does save all three friends and a reporter who shows up for some reason named Jorg, she and her friends win the prize money, but then she states that she's returning to Owlbleed and tells them not to follow. This then initiates a new game plus mode where Erico meets the park's creator and finds out in probably no surprise to anyone really, that he is her father. She then defeats him in battle, for some reason, and New Game Plus ends. And that is the end of part two of tier three of the Disturbing Video Games Iceberg. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today. Thank you for staying subscribed while I was gone for a month. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you Patience for asking where I was. I appreciate that as well. Uh, shout out to Patience. Love patience. She's awesome. She's always here. And I will catch you all in the next video.